Folks, here's our part 404 of Thumbs Up Charter Services behind the scenes, taking a look at the Ambrose and what a big project she is today. I'm going to show you the boat roller trailers right now, explain a little bit what was going on with her when we first bought her and how she sat on the trailer, and then we're going to look at some brakes. And then after that, we're going to have to call it quick for a couple days because we got a bunch of charters to do, and those come first this time of year. So we'll pick up on this next week um, and get much more specific when we do about some of the things that we're doing. Um, to repair like the trailer and the brakes and other things. But anyways, let me just grab the camera here right quick and I'll show you what was going on with the boat rollers on the trailer here. And we're at the transom, of course. And as I said, when we first bought this boat, she was sitting about four inches to my left uh, on this trailer. And if you look at the rollers themselves, they're actually right now sitting in the center of the chine. If you can see the chine there, that uh, piece of metal that protrudes from the bottom of the boat. And that actually isn't as bad as it was because at one point that, that chine was that way uh, to the left of the roller. So what we had to do is pick the back of the boat up with a uh, toe strap sling and a cherry picker and move it to the right four inches to get her center lined as you can see down the trailer now. We got that pretty well intact. But the problem is, is that our rollers are still in the wrong position. So what we'll need to do on this is we're going to need on each one of these rollers, somebody to loosen up that U-bolt and that U-bolt and then slide this whole unit this way and adjust them that way. And we'll have a segment on that so you can see that. But then she'll sit right in the trailer and won't give anybody any problems when you're trying to load it at the dock. So with that said, let's go over and take a look at the brakes and the wheel bearing hubs. And we'll show you what's going on there. Pick up on all this in the next couple of weeks. So we'll give a little more time. So I want to say thanks to the guys over at Richfield Trailer Supply in Flint. Uh, Richfield's been around, I think, like 60 years. Family-owned company, very good people. I've used them for years and years, as a lot of people have around here. And I took in these brake assemblies today uh, to them that came off the trailer. And it's, the brakes are just on one axle, but they're a seven-inch drum brake. And seeing how we're doing everything, I just want to take them in and get complete assemblies because they do sell them like that and just completely redo it with 100% new material. Unfortunately, they took one look at these and said, wow, where did you get these things? They had not seen something like this in probably almost 30 years. But what it is is the Bendix unit <clears throat> It's a 7-inch brake. Not very common apparently anymore. And, but the big issue is these bolt space, the spacing of these bolts for attaching it to the axle itself is not a common size anymore or common spacing, if you will, used in the industry. So to try to find something off the shelf that will fit this is a problem. So they took mercy on me and looked at them and said, you know, they really don't look that bad. Um, you know, the rubber's still pliable on the slave cylinder and stuff like that. Why don't you just clean them up and try to get them to work? So that's what exactly what we're going to do. We're putting on a new um, tow hitch on the front of this uh, tow hitch brake actuator because that's shot and we'll bleed them and try to get them to work and I'm betting we could probably do that. The wheel bearings, like I said earlier in the video, I was surprised that they weren't that bad. The front axle hubs are actually in good shape and I just need to repack those. So we'll show you how we repack those, uh, give you some tips about repacking them, and then back here on the drums we're going to have to clean these up the best we can. And then these races actually, particularly on this one, are shot. So. The guys at Richfield fix me up with new seals and bearings and, and bearing races and cotter pins. Always use new cotter pins when you do these. Don't reuse them. And we got some neat tricks, a neat trick that I'll show you. Maybe you don't know it, about how to install these races without damaging them. Because if you nick them or ding them up trying to pound them in, okay, you're, you're going to affect not only the operation of it, but the longevity of your bearing, and you don't want that. So we have a pretty cool trick that we're, we'll show you. So with that said, a um, couple weeks, we'll make some more videos. I just want to say thank you for looking at our project today. Yes, it's a lot of work. I'm pretty excited about it. I love projects like this. So hopefully you'll be along the way with us. And you know, if, if you're a pro at this and done it like I have, uh, maybe you'll just enjoy it. If you're thinking about doing something like this, maybe you'll pick something up and go out and find your own project boat to work on. But in the meantime, it's been Captain Carl Bernstein at Thumbs Up Charter Services reminding you we are wild for walleye. If you want to go for a fishing charter, give us a call at 810-513-6073.
visit us on Google at Thumbs Up Charter Services in Seabuing, Michigan, or Bayport. That's two words, Bay and Port. Um, you can get to our website from there. Um, you can contact us on our website by a, by a contact form. You just fill out your information. We'll get back with you, or you can talk to us live by the phone number I gave you. In any case, have a great week, great weeks, folks. And until we see you again, tight lines and great times on the Great Lakes. Thanks, thanks folks. Have a great day.